And okay, we are ambassadors for Messiah. That's where we stopped off last week. In Matthew 5 and 16, we talked about uh, ambassadors are supposed to occupy on behalf of the king. Yeshua said, occupy until I come. Do business. You cannot do business sitting in the house. You cannot be fruitful unless you're doing business on the computer and it's going worldwide. Y'all hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Uh, Matthew 5 and 16. And this is Yeshua talking here. And he's going, he's saying, so that they might let your light so shine before men. And, and you can let your light shine on the computer as you go out, but a, a whole lot of darkness is going out on the computer as well. But he said, let your light so shine before men. Let it so shine that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's why I said our life should be uh, showing forth the praises because they, whoever they is out there, from your family on down, on down and out, if you will, they should be able to see your good works. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord uh, saying uh, this week, ask them, what good works did they do that Father would be glorified? Don't say. Don't say. But he kept asking the question because he said, what good works? Because we, this group here has got more word in them. What are you stepping out on that is producing? Because Father didn't just say, gather up the word until your head is so fat it will explode. He, Yeshua said, be fruitful that my Father will be glorified. He is, not, he is not glorified if we're not bringing forth fruit. And we can be fruitful in every area, from parenthood to spousehood to friendhood, from, um, in our jobs. Amen. Do, you, do you hear what the Spirit is saying? And the Spirit is asking, if you took a tabulation of this week, what things did the world or someone outside yourself see that they could give glory to God about? And Miss Anita, you might say, well, I'm only in the house with, with Trina. What did Trina see that she could glorify? That you, I mean, you can do good works. Do you, you know what I'm saying? What are they saying in the neighborhood where you go to shop? What good works have you done? Not just that you showed up. That's not the occupation that Christ was talking about. Yeah. He said, do business. I've given you a talent. I've given you, I've given you grace and truth. I've given you everything. Now, what do you have to show for it that people can see? And you say, well, I'm filled with, with, uh, with faith and power. Well, step out and help somebody. Even if the Holy Spirit told me to ask pastor, but, but there was no time element because I'm full of the word and power. But he said, ask pastor what I could agree in prayer because we need to produce Amen. and stop being big fat babies. We need to get the word out of us and into manifestation. Amen. And if I can agree with any of you to produce, I'll do it. Okay? All right. Ha, la, 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 la. So we are to see the good works that Father may be glorified. That Father may be glorified in heaven. Okay? Some of the works of the kingdom would be healing. And you go, well, I don't have the gift of healing. You can pray for the sick. It's up to Father to, for them to recover. It's your job to pray. It's your job to pray in the Spirit. He's not going to pray in the Spirit, but well, the Spirit does pray for you if you just open your mouth and fellowship with Him. Okay? But there's all kind of healing. There's physical healing. There's heart healing. There's a... a everybody I know has got some emotional thing. Is there not a kindness or... A, there's all kind of healing that we're supposed to be bringing forth. All kind of healing. 
And we have the power within us, resident within us. The kingdom of God is within us. Holy Ghost is in us. But that's just prosperity. I remember uh, hearing Kenneth Copeland say years ago, you should never go into a new situation, a new place, and when you leave, that place be the same. Whether you go home for vacation, when, when I go home for vacation, I make sure that I leave them better than what I, they were when I got there. Amen. That something is built up, person is built up, house is built up, seed has been sown, something. You should never go to a place, not as ambassadors for Christ. That's right. Every place that Christ went, he affected the atmosphere. He affected those that came in contact with him. Never should you leave a, a place and, it, and you leave it the same as when you got there. When you're carrying a promise around with you, crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so, so prosperity, you've got to sow these things if we expect but to receive them. And Father says they're all yours, but we're not doing the word that we have in our spirit. Okay? Uh, the scripture said that we're supposed to be reconcilers. Amen. Not fault finders. Not, uh, what's the word that you used? Uh, division makers. We are supposed to be reconciling the world unto Christ. As if God himself in us were reconciling them. So being reconciled, beseeching them, pleading with them. Be reconciled. And you don't necessarily have to be preaching the good news to them. You can be walking out the good news. Because nobody cares about what you know until they know that you care for them. But you can't do that sitting in the house. Well, and, and if you have a family, you can, you can do that sitting in the house. But, and you can be reconciling your children to God. You can be teaching your children. We're supposed to be restorers of the breach, not makers of the breach. Okay? These are just some of the good works we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to, and you say, well, I, do, I don't have my, my needs met. And I'm, uh, okay. So, so you're waiting for, okay. Yeah, I don't have a job yet, okay. So while you're Believing for the manifestation that, well, I haven't believed. Okay. Well, come and let somebody believe for a job. And then what? For the next seven days, worry that I don't get it? No. Believe you have received it. And then go, and, go on and do the work, sow the seed that you can sow to prosper somebody else. Because the same, what does the scripture say? With the same measure that you sow a seed, that's not just money seed. Mm -hmm. to, to, be, to have a friend, you have to sow friendship things. Mm -hmm. To have somebody, uh, uh, well to be a friend, you got to listen. You got to talk to people. You can't just say, well I'm here. <laughs> they should be my friend. Ray Ray, you here. At least Ray Ray said call me. Call me. Talk to me. Something. Something. Okay? Um, but Yeshua said in John 20 and 21, he said, as the Father has sent me, what did he say? So send I you. Yeshua didn't sit around in the house, full of the word and power, sitting in the house making carpenter stuff. Not once his ministry started. He went about. That's all he did. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. Sowing good. Sowing good. Healing all that were oppressed of the, of the devil because God was with him. And he said, even as God was with me, so Father is with you. So I'm sending you out in the same way. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, after... After he rose from, from the dead, and this is what he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Then the scripture said that he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Now this was not Acts 2 when they got the speaking of tongues and were baptized, but he breathed on them saying, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I say Holy Ghost, breathe on us again. Amen. Fan those flames. Fan those flames of fire until we're passionate about something. Something. I'm so passionate about the next step that I could scream. And that doesn't mean that I go to you. To, what's, the, what's the next step? That means I'm in the face of the Holy Ghost. Because that's who Yeshua gave. And he said, when the Holy Ghost will come, he will lead you. He will guide you into all truth. Why would you ask me what's the next step when the Holy Ghost is within you going, excuse me? That's what I was sent for. Not only to show you the next step, but to be walking right there with you, empowering you. Okay? Okay. Uh, la, la, la. In Romans 8... Verse 1 through 2, when Yeshua said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, what Romans 8 says is that the law of the Spirit of life, Holy Spirit, when Yeshua died and was resurrected and Holy Ghost came, new dispensation. New dispensation. Because he said the Holy Ghost has been with you, but now he'll be in you. Okay, and this scripture says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's a law. The law of the spirit. We no longer are, are supposed to be led from the outside. We're supposed to be led from the inside. Remember when the, the spirit of the Lord said to Moses, he said in the future, he said, I'll have a people who's the, where the law can be written upon their hearts. Written upon their hearts. That means you do things out of nature, not because someone said, this is the law, you need to do that. It will be your nature. You know what it's like to have something carved on your heart? That means in that you will live and you will move and you will have your being. You'll be directed by that. And the scripture says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're free from the law of sin and death. But as, as we follow the, the law of the spirit, <laughs> there still is a law. <laughs> there still is a law. Matter of fact, the kingdom of God that is within us is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Everything in the kingdom is Holy Ghost. Amen. He is the administrator of this holy nation. He is the administrator. That's why Yeshua says, I'm out of here, but I have to go so this one can be in you. Because Yeshua in the flesh could not be inside of us and be with us everywhere. He said, it's expedient that I go so that he can come. Because I need to get the Father, Son, Holy Spirit inside of you so you'll be carriers. So wherever you go, you'll be carriers. And the law of the Spirit will direct you. And it, it doesn't say, it does say, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua. There is no life and death in Yeshua. It's life. It's life. Father said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. He said, choose between blessing, cursing, life, and death. If you have chosen Yeshua, that is life. That's why good news, gospel, is life. There is no condemnation. There is no death in the gospel. Or else it wouldn't be good news. This kingdom, this holy nation that we're a part of, it has two characteristics that I could think of right off the top of my head. And the first one is love. Mm. Is love. There, there's no death in love. Matter of fact, the scripture says love is stronger than death. See, this, this law of the spirit is stronger than any other law. You know, there's like a law of gravity that it operates every day. Well, there's a law of sin and death that operates every day. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua, that's stronger than all of them. Does that make sense? 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that as part of this nation, that's what we're supposed to be restoring. Life everywhere we go. Not condemnation, not death. We're restorers, not makers of the breach. Grace, truth, and love should be our characteristics because that's our nature. That is our new nature, whether you act like it or not. That, that's your new nature. That is within you, okay? 